Actually, standard work is the current worst way that we know to do the process. When we say it's the current best way, everybody's satisfied with that. They think that's the best way then, and well, good, we're done. And they don't realize that standard work should change, right? It should evolve and grow. When we look at it as this is the worst way to do it currently, it drives us to think, what's the better way to do it? Today, I'm excited to welcome Mike Thielen to the show as we continue our AME interview series. Now, I've known Mike for many years and can safely say he is one of the smartest lean thinkers I have ever met. And today, he and I get a little technical as we take a relatively deep dive into the topic of standardized work. Now, show notes for this episode, which will include links to everything we talk about, can be found over at GembaPodcast.com. Just look for episode 298. And if you're interested in learning even more about the topic of standardized work, Gimba Academy has you covered as we have a course dedicated to the topic within our School of Lean. Just head over to GimbaAcademy.com to learn more. Okay, enough from me. Let's get to the show. Mike, welcome back to the show. You've, we've done videos and stuff with you, but... Have you, I don't know. Have you been on the podcast? We did I think a, you did. We did a podcast a couple years ago. Yeah. Now. It's been a while. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I had Richard Sheridan on just a little while ago and, um, yeah, he was on episode three. Oh, wow. And I, I think his episode will be episode 300. So <laughs> three to A little bit of growth yeah. there. <laughs> so, good stuff, man. Well, hey, so how's the show going for you so far? You know, real good. Uh, I was like Amy. I, I kind of live in the idea exchanges because I like to share ideas back and forth. And, yeah. man, the discussions in those have been just really, really good this yeah. year. So. Yeah. Um, you know the drill. We like to kind of begin our shows with a, with a quote. So do you have one? I do. And, uh, you know, standard work is, is something I like to talk about. Uh, it's all part of the problem solving process from a lean perspective. And, you know, I, I thought and thought about, geez, which quote do you choose? Because there's a lot of good quotes. And I decided to go with something a little bit obscure. Um, years ago, and I mean years ago, I think we were still in Yahoo groups, discussion groups, if you can think back to when that was. There was a guy, we were talking about standard work. And everybody says, you know, standard work is the current best way to do a process. And that's how we need to attack it. And everybody's you know, on board, yeah, 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 yep, that's the way standard work is. And one of the guys, and, and you know, God forbid, I can't remember who it was. I wish mm-hmm. I did because I should have, you know, should be able to attach the quote to this person. And I really feel bad. Hopefully he doesn't listen to this podcast and go, <laughs> man, he stole my line. <laughs> um, but he actually made a comment in our discussions. He says, you know, we changed our perspective on it. And we said, actually, standard work is the current worst way that we know to do the process. Hmm. And everybody got kind of, you know, there's a lot of vacant space in emails. And he finally kind of clarified. He says, you know, when we say it's the current best way, everybody's satisf- satisfied with that. Mm. They think that's the best way then. And, well, good, we're done. And they don't realize that standard work should change, yeah. right? It should evolve and grow. And that quote was then a, hey, when we look at it as this is the worst way to do it currently, it drives us to think, what's the better way to do it? Mm-hmm. And so I, I love that aspect. I love that mentality of, yeah. hey, let's not call it the current best way. Let's call it the current worst way we know. Nice. All right. All right. Mike, tell us about your background. Tell us about how you got into this lean stuff and then tell us what you're up to these days. Well, I tell you, I spent five years in sales and sales management and, um, you know, got wearing a suit and tie every day and, and just, I don't know, I, I decided to move and change career and just really flip. And I went from first shift suit and tie to third shift area supervisor wearing sweatpants and a t-shirt and went into manufacturing. Um, spent uh, a little over 20 years now in manufacturing. Doesn't seem like that long. Yeah. But a little over 20 years now. Um, worked in all sorts of industries. You know, we started playing with with Kanban and cell design in uh, 1998, and we didn't really know what it was. But somebody read an article and said, "Hey, let's see if we can do this." Yeah. And so we started doing it on the floor, and um, then about 2005, 2006. I've um, you know, been playing with Lean now for about eight years, thought I was pretty darn sharp. Mm-hmm. Then I met my mentors who are from Toyota, mm-hmm. discovered, wow, I'm really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> or a lot to learn. A lot to and learn, yeah. yes. I was still a very young student. I wasn't yeah. as educated as I thought. Right. And um, yeah, really got the bug then and, and started reading everything, got my hands on. And, and I spent two years with my mentors and uh, everything just kind of skyrocketed from there. I attended my first AME, I think, in uh, 2011. Okay. And ever since then, I've been leading conference sessions or pre-conference sessions here. I, you know, I love the, the, the buzz, right, yeah. and the making connections. 
Um, so I've been at it now for 20, this will be 21 years technically since 1998. And... Um, a lot of knowledge. Lot you of and John Miller used to run around together. You know, I spent, all kinds uh, of trouble. Yeah, I spent three years with Kaizen Institute. So yeah. uh, John was there with uh, the last couple of years. John was there before yeah. he decided he was just going to dedicate all his time and money to you. So, <laughs> you know. Um, but, yeah, that was a great experience, too. Uh, you know, Masaki Amai, I mean, wow. He's just, oh, you know. Mm-hmm. There's no way to explain getting to meet and, and be around somebody yeah. like that, you know. And uh, so spent three years with Kaizen Institute doing consulting. And, you know, consulting was fun, but I got it's just nice to, be able to go back into a plant. And, and I don't know, today, my job now, I work with Steel Partners, which is a, a private equity firm. We own around 70 plants across the globe, mm-hmm. 70, 70 facilities across the globe. And um, so we travel still. I'm kind of like an internal consultant now, travel all the time. But uh, I'm going into plants where I was there a month ago, two months ago, you know, Working with people that I recognize, you know, just last week I was in Hamburg, Pennsylvania, and one of the guys from uh, an early training session a year, almost a year and a half ago, he comes in, hey, Mike, how you doing? And how's the wife? How are the kids? You know, and there's that. Yeah, that, familiarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just something that's that good. I missed from consulting. You never really had familiarity from facility yeah. to facility in that angle. So, I got you. So, yeah, I've been back with uh, Steel Partners for a year and a half, uh, back in manufacturing, working with, and working not just manufacturing, but with sales. Um, Steel Partners owns, you know, uh, financial companies, paper company, paper printing companies, um, and manufacturing stuff. Uh, our actual benefactor, our our, our private inve- private investment owner, is a um, a sports guy. He's kind of got a a thing for sports. So we've got uh, youth sports leagues on hmm. the East Coast and West Coast, and soccer leagues for soccer and baseball. That's um, cool. We've got baseball heaven up in New York. So it's kind of like kind of like the Little League World Series. So, you know, it's kind of a fun thing. We get to play with sports programs and coaches and how to make better programs for them from oh, a lean perspective. Awesome. Oh, yeah. It's just that's the cool thing about Steel Partners is there's so many different avenues and yeah. aspects. So Very cool. Really cool. So, listen, yesterday, I think it was yesterday or maybe it was two days ago, I was uh, laying in uh, my hotel room kind of um, unplugging a little bit and I was – mind num- numbingly f- flipping through LinkedIn, you know, like we all do in our social medias. And, and all of a sudden I'm like, saw Mike Thielen and I was like, what's he all saying about? And then ranting and raving about <laughs> something standard work and all these comments. And I'm like, whoa, Mike's fired up about something. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so I, I got to reading the comments and all that. I was like, Hey, and then I saw you walking through the hall. I was like, hey, what's up with standard work, man? <laughs> so uh, so let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about, like, w- what was the post about and what was what motivated it and, and uh, what's the countermeasure, most importantly? So, you know, standard work and is really not that difficult to me, the way my mentor taught it to me. And, of course, we called it standardized work. And over the years, it's kind of been, been shortened to standard work. But I'm sitting in this discussion group, and – a lot of people around the room it's not just a bunch of new people it's new people and experienced people but they're all talking about geez you know i take the standard work down to the floor and i can't get the operators to buy in and i got a 35 year employee that doesn't want to follow standard work because he knows how to do the job and he doesn't need me to come down and tell him how to do it and i don't know why our standard work isn't working and you know everybody's talking about how they use the tool they fill out the little form and it's got steps and Mm. but boy nobody wants to follow it and you know i'm sitting in that room for 45 minutes mm-hmm. and I, you know, I, I get a little gung-ho, get a little anxious, you know, I get a little excited. <laughs> so I'm doing my best to bite my tongue and not say anything. And, and finally I, I raise my hand and I'm like, okay, I said, you know, 20 years at this Toyota mentors, you know, my mentor always taught me that standard work is an agreement on the current best way to do a job. It's, dev- it's designed by the operator working with supervisor. It was designed on the floor. Mm-hmm. I said, all I hear in here is how come people aren't following the standard work I created for mm. them on how to do their job. Mm. You know, that that's not standard work. That's work standard. That's engineering telling me how to do something. Yeah. And I said, they all, maybe we all have the wrong definition of standard work from what it should be. Mm. <laughs> and room got kind of quiet. And the guy right in front of me turns around to me and says, amen, brother, and puts his hand up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm sorry, but it's just frustrating because, yeah. you know, my mentor taught me how to do it. And I, I see so many of these people that... They weren't taught right. Yeah. They, they were taught a sheet of paper, but not how to do it. Yeah. Just here's the form, fill this out. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, I got a little fired up yesterday, and 
made some comments, ended up having uh, having someone from, from outside contact me and ask me if I'd like to write an article on standard work. Yeah. And I'm like, sure, which was a mistake. <laughs> you know, I haven't written <laughs> an article. Do, oh, right? yeah, I haven't yeah. written one for like seven years. Okay. You know, I've just been too busy to write articles. And so I'm sitting in the hotel last night. I'm sitting up in the room. And I'm thinking, well, this will take me an hour. I went to bed about 12.30 oh, last boy. night, finally got done with it. <laughs> oh, man. That's great. Yeah, it was only three, two and a half pages. It took me that long to write it. I was, I yeah. kind of reword, and, okay, tone it down. You're getting excited. Tone it down yeah. too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's let's do the an audio version of maybe what you wrote, you know, and um, let's kind of just walk through, you know, uh, the basics of, of standardized work. So what are the elements? Okay, so... You know, the way I actually def- wrote the article last night was I started with definition, right? It's it's the current best work, best way between supervisor and, and operator, operators on the floor. And mm-hmm. whether that operator is, you know, a machinist or the girl in accounts payable, yeah. and right? it's who's doing the job, mm-hmm. working with their leader to say this is the way that this job is done, and we both agree these are the steps, this is what we're going to do. So Let I Let me started- stop you there for a sec. So um, what, what, what's your take on, um, you know, like within, the, say, the – you know, there's always a lot of confusion between uh, in the TWI movement, like job instruction and it's in standardized work and how, you know, they might be complementary, but they're not the same. Right? right. But within JI, we talk about the one best way to do the work, you know, to do the job kind right. of thing. So um, so how do you how, when you're creating this standardized work, what's the relationship between the operator? Because what if they don't know the best way? Absolutely. So ironically, I even had that in my article. I talked about TWI because I love TWI. You know, that was one of the first things that my mentor told me to, to work on. Um, you know, I've, I've met Jim Hunsinger, I think, once in person. But Jim and Brian Lund uh, used to work for Energizer. I don't know yeah, where Brian, Brian is Brian. now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they were really gung-ho back in early 2000s on, on TWI. And, and I remember having communications with them when they were going to the Smithsonian to pull out the original manuals yeah. and, and then digitize them. Mm-hmm. Um, I have my copy because I reached out to Brian. You know, I was in with that group. I'm like, guys, when you get it, I want it. And I still to this day have their, the digital copy Brian sent me from mm-hmm. what they developed out of that, that yeah. research. Yeah. Um, the thing with TWI is it's an I do, we do, you do. But I have to know the process first. Yeah. Right. So I do, we do, you do. And it's it's learned by working with the shop floor employees who know how to do the process. Right. TWI is great for new hires, mm-hmm. right? Standardized work is good for new hires, but standardized work is also making sure that all my people on all my shifts are doing it the same way yeah. and we're able to repeat, right? The whole point of standardization is to get repeatability. Yeah. And so TWI is a great thing for new hires, yeah. but you build that stuff with, through TWI by engaging the current operators who are the experts at the process. Mm. And so that's one of the things that I, I even heard that in that discussion group of, you know, we use TWI and we come out and tell the people how to do their job. Well, no, <laughs> that's not what TWI was. TWI yeah. was bring the expert in, develop the process from the expert, and now as a train the trainer person, yeah, and the I'm expert skilled more in, than likely is an operator. <laughs> right, right, and I'm skilled yeah. in training where the operator's skilled in operating. Yeah, and so what I get is the operator's best way. Mm-hmm. And then I train new people in the best way that that operator showed me how to do. Yeah. And that's the train the trainer aspect of yeah. TWI. Got it. So, okay. so yeah, I mean, that's it's a great thing because that was one of the big points of TWI yeah. is a supporting tool, but TWI isn't all of it. Right? Yeah. So, um, but, you know, we get into that. We got into I wrote in about the, the definition of what standardized work is and, and how, it is, how it should be viewed versus how I think it has changed. And then I talked about the elements, right? There's um, SWIP. Standard work and process. Yep. There's tack time, mm-hmm. and then there's the work sequence. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now tack time, and you know, I covered each one of these in the article. Ironically, just real high level tack time. You know, basically Touchdown. it's your yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah it's your customer demand right. Yeah. And and one of my friends um, actually uh, Scott McDuffie, one of my coworkers, uh, he worked with David Mann, mm-hmm. who wrote uh, Creating a Lean Culture. Mm-hmm. And Scott, we all give him, we always give him grief about his Michigan English, but he took tact and went okay, it's T A over KT. TA, time available. So how much time do I have in my plant? Over the KT in his Michigan spelling of customer, with a K instead of a C, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> customer take. What's the customer demand? So it's time available over customer demand. And, you know, it really helps simplify when you're training other people mm. what tack time is. So, you know, there's your tack time. You establish what your demand is. Yeah. Then you, what's the work sequence? What's the actual sequence of work that, I, uh, that we have to do to make this product? Mm-hmm. And then the last one is the standard whip. How much whip do I need in between processes 
to be able to maintain flow or you know maintain the absence of flow, maintain a pull system, and that you know both internal and external, right? Because you have internal customers, you might have a heat treat where you got to go out to heat treat in your building and then come back into your cell. So you've got some SWIP to work in there so that you have coverage in case something happens. Mm -hmm. But we do the same thing if we have an external process. If we don't have heat treat internal to our facility and we send it to the local subcontractor, then we have that standard WIP inside going going out to that, that external source and then coming back in. Mm -hmm. So standard work is... You know, those are elements of it. Yeah. That's, that's the key three elements you need to create to be able to do standard work. Because mm -hmm. without any one of those three, you don't know what your customer demand is. You can't balance your line. Yeah. You don't know the sequence steps. You, can't, you don't know where to break when your demand changes. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you have um, the, the SWIP, that gives you the freedom to handle things you don't plan on. I mean, yeah. let's face it. Not everybody has 100% yeah, right, <laughs> right, 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 reliability. Right. right. So, right. so, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the elements. So I want to talk a little bit about tag time. Because I think we... We uh, underestimate sometimes people understanding tag time, and there's a lot of confusions. I'll often hear people talking about, you know, measuring tag time with a, <laughs> you know, or a stopwatch, or <laughs> or what if I have this many people, you know, on my my line? How does that impact tag time? And you know, so talk a little bit about some of the misconceptions and some of the the you know that we don't measure it with a stopwatch, sure. you know, we calculate it, you know, like, yeah. like talk about that. So yeah, everybody confuses cycle time with tag time. You know, yep. Cycle time, what's it take to get through a machine or what it take to get through the entire process in my facility? Cycle mm. time has no bearing whatsoever on tag. Tag is what customer wants. Right. And if I run a one shift operation, you know, and I have 30 minutes of break or yeah, 30 minutes of breaks. Uh, so I have seven hours and 30 minutes available. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter. What else I do? That's the best I got. Seven, thir seven hours and thirty minutes available. Yeah. And if the customer demands X number of pieces, it's those pieces. You know that that time available divided by those pieces. There's what my tactics. Doesn't matter if I have you know eighteen people sitting there or twelve people sitting there. It's this many seconds in a day that I've got to get. Yep. And so when you look at tack time from that perspective. Okay, if my tack time is 10 seconds and my cycle time is 20 seconds, we got a problem. I got a problem. I either need more equipment, or I need to people. add shifts, or I need to add yeah. people if it's a yeah. if it's manual process, yeah. right? Yeah. I've got to match my cycle time to the tack time. Yeah. But measuring cycle time isn't tacked. Right. So, that's one of the big challenges we see in most organizations is well, we got cycle time of 10 seconds. Great. What's your customer in? Well, we got cycle time of 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. But if you only need one every three minutes, why are you running that machine 100% of the time? So what about, what do you do then when someone comes to you and says, I never make the same thing twice ever? You so, know, so many companies struggle with, uh, Steel Partners calls it PQPR, uh, which is I product, think, quantity, product, product routing. quantity, product routing. Yeah, product routing. Um, I've never used that until I got Steel Partners because we just called it something generic, which I don't remember anymore. But, you know, having it defined as PQPR, understanding what products you have. You know, I worked in a, in a gearbox manufacturer for five years when I, had, when I was working with my mentors. And, you know, gearboxes. But our standard order quantity was one. Mm -hmm. We delivered 413 units a day. Mm -hmm. And they could be any size, shape, gear ratio, you know, anything. Like steel gear, brass gear. So, so they had different cycle times to oh build. Oh yeah, them. different cycle times. You got one that's got to be heat treated, one that doesn't. You got machining steel versus machining brass. Yeah, which is way different. And so we had to say, okay, what's our what's our PQR? What are our product families? How long does it take to make that product family? And when we first started, we said, okay, we have five different families that are going in this cell, and each one takes their own amount of time in general. Yeah. One might take 13 minutes, but really the range is between 11 and 15. Mm -hmm. And one is 17 minutes, but the range is 16 to 20. You know? yeah. And so we kind of said, here's our product families, and we're going to limit because of the number of hours we have in a day based on our, our demand. And we looked back five years mm -hmm. and said, okay, five years, and then what do we want to grow to? Yeah. So kind of use that as what we thought we'd have for business. Mm -hmm. And we said, okay, here's what we can build in each of these five categories. Mm -hmm. And as we improve the cell... Right? As we started seeing problems and understanding processes and standardizing our work, we were able to take about a year and a half into it. We went, okay, you know what? We don't need these five lines, any five groupings anymore. We can sell it all. Anything in this entire five product family because we've got it all simplified now down to about 14 minutes, mm. give or take a minute. Mm -hmm. And so now we don't need product families. We've got them all one, one, one big lump sum. Mm. So a lot of the challenge is 
I hear organizations, well, I was just up in a room, guys saying, well, you know, we're, we're a hospital and you never know what's going to come in the ER. You don't, but there's surgeries, mm -hmm. there's Band-Aids, there's burns, right? You can categorize in a hospital, just like manufacturing, what's my PQPR? What do I see most often? Yeah. And I'm going to take that 80%. 80% of ours are burns and and sutures. Yeah. Okay, then now we got groups. Yeah. Now we can customize and standardize for that, that group. Yeah. So, you well, know, that's... Yeah, I think, and I've also seen, you know, just the whole idea of... Uh, um, Back in my one of my corporate jobs, and I honestly don't remember what it was. I had an old Danaher, former Danaher guy, you know. So he was real big on his mixed model playbook kind of mm -hmm. thing, you know. And and uh, you know, it was it, you know, if if this, then that, you know. So you know, basically, had a book, you mm -hmm. know, with uh, with uh, with you know, if if tact is this, um, th then and this is what we do. This is how we respond to it, right? Yep. And how many people are involved, who, what they do. You know, we're going to get into the components of standard work here in a little bit. But, you know, talking about the dance steps, who does what, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and, you know, if uh, your tack time, if your customer demand doubles, you've got half the time now. Yep. So if it's a manual process, you double your staff. Yep. And that's where, and great, because we're going to come into the elements, or into the components, because the components of standard work then are where I say, okay, instead of you doing 12 tasks, yep. now I'm going to take two of you and each of you do six. Yep. I've just doubled my opportunity. Yep. So, yeah, using tact to determine who does what in that job breakdown yep. is critical. Yep, yep. Let's, let's, so let's get into it. Let's, what, what are the components of standardized work? So, you know, my mentor drilled these into me so much I can do them in my sleep, and if I don't do them in order, it screws me up anymore. <laughs> so, um, do them backwards, Mike. Oh, yeah. Woo! i gotta, I got to write them down. Hang on. Um, so, you know, defi highly defined work is the goal for standardized work. It's to have highly defined work. And Toyota, my mentor called them the rules in use. Um, Jamie Flinchbaugh from Hitchhiker's Guide to Lean mm -hmm. called them something similar but, but different, but it was the same mindset. So Jamie and I have a lot of fun conversations because his Chrysler experience used different words, but really the same mentality he had that I had from my mentor. Um, well, you know, rules in use is highly defined work, clear and binary connection, simple and direct flow. And so that highly defined work is really the, the countermeasure to highly defined work of creating it with standardized work. So your content is your first step, right? What's the content? What is it to do this job? Let's lay out all the steps to do this job. Mm -hmm. And that's our first step is defining content. Second step, sequence. Okay, now that we have all the things we need to do, what's the right sequence to do these in? Mm. Um, what was it? I can't remember if it was yesterday. In one of the discussion groups, somebody talked about they used to, this lady in, in her job used to do steps one, two, and three. Might have been the keynotes yesterday, actually. It was with... Um, Sheridan, I think, with, with Chief oh, Joy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he talks about she used to do one, two, and three. It was at one of the insurance companies. And he walked in, and she had a balloon above her desk saying that she was an experiment in process. And she said, he went and talked to her, and she said, well, it's, it's steps one, two, and three, but three is where I find all the errors, and they have to go back and repeat two mm. and three. So I just decided to do one, three, and then two. Yeah. Because I'll capture the errors before I get to that that other step. Yeah. And, you know, that's the, the key of sequence is what's the right sequence? Well, here's the right sequence for today. And what's that sequence look like? Well, hey, you know what? This is, drives the continuous improvement of standard work, yeah. right? Is, hey, this step should, could be done ahead of time, mm -hmm. or this step could be done while I'm doing something else, yeah. you know? So it's getting the right content, and then getting that content into the right sequence. Once you get the right sequence, then it's the timing. Okay, mm -hmm. Component number three, timing. Without timing, the content and sequence don't provide any value. Because standardized work, it's an agreement between the operator and the supervisor, but it's also the methodology for an operator to self-direct. Yeah. Okay. If I'm not able to meet this standard work, instead of waiting for you to come and discipline me because I'm not performing, yeah. my goal should be I'm not meeting this goal. I'm going to go get the trainer or, or maybe you. I'm going to pull the end on. Yeah, I'm going to pull yeah. the end on and say, I need help. I can't do this at yeah. this speed. Why can't I do that? Yeah. So without the timing, they don't know what the expectation is. Yeah, and without they don't know if they're winning or losing. Yeah, you know, it's like playing a game without a scoreboard, right? Right. Who wins in the end? Oh, guess what, Ron, you lost. Yeah. Sorry. So it's really driving that timing that says this is how long each one of those steps take in sequence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I can self-direct. It also drives the leader then into leader commission by, mm -hmm. uh, leader, you know, the leader standard work, leader process auditing. Yes. Right? Because now I can grab that standard work, I can look at the timing of it, yep. and I can watch and observe you, and I can see, oh, okay, Ron's struggling with step four. It took him a little bit longer than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Now I know where to coach. Yep. You know, not, not go out and tell Ron he does a bad job, and boy, you better get your act together, right. and I'm going to fire you. Right. But now I know where to coach Ron to make him a better employee. Right. So having that timing gives both the leader and the operator power to mm -hmm. understand how to get the job done. Yeah. Right. Then the fourth one is location. 
And in a lot of processes, the same person does the job the whole way through. So everybody's like, oh, location, that's stupid. I stand at the desk and I do the work. But to your point about tact, what happens when tact has to be cut in half? Yeah. And now I've got to double the throughput. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, hey, maybe operator one is doing steps one, two, three here, and then stepping across the aisle and doing steps seven, eight, nine. Yeah. And the second operator is doing four, five, six in the middle of the process, yeah. right? Kind of the, the U-shaped cell mentality yes. of processing. Yes. So the location is important to know, hey, you do these steps here, these steps here. Along with your standard whip, right? Right, right. Built into Along that What's location. there so it covers yeah. when you have to make the yeah. moves. Yeah. So... And then the fifth one is outcome. Okay. And, and that fifth component is, is as critical as anything because the outcome is where you're saying how long it should take to do it, how do you make a high-quality part in the safest way possible, meeting that customer demand. Mm-hmm. Right? So there's my expected outcome. It should take me 77 seconds. And, you know, the highlighted areas are quality areas. The highlighted areas uh, in, in red are quality. The highlighted yellow are safety to be aware of so I don't cut myself or do something foolish. Mm-hmm. And that drives the whole thing to make sure that what I'm producing is a good quality part ready for the next person because we don't want to pass on bad quality, right? We yeah. want built-in quality. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Um, talk about, well, you've already talked about who makes it. I think it's operator, yep. concert with supervisor, you know, maybe even an engineer or two, I Absolutely. suppose, right? Absolutely. Get, get involved here and, and helping us to identify the uh, that best way. Yep. Right. You know, a lot of times you bring in quality because the quality people are the ones that, you know, we do an exercise where uh, our quality folks are given one direction and our participants in our little simulation are given another. Mm. And just to drive the plane home, that a lot of times quality, believe it or not, and even to this day and age, quality has different specs than we do because mm. they have the customer spec and we have what operation says is okay to pass. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it that standard work, if you can involve cross-functional team, I mean, mm. the engineer has to have some say. He's got work standards. He's got ISOs, you know, ISO certification stuff to worry about. He's got um, ANSI or other requirements, BABT for, you know, used to be old British Approvals Board mm. um, for electronic stuff. And they know those specs that have to be part of the job so that you're doing a quality part. Yeah. So, you know, it is an agreement between the operator and the supervisor so that they can both use it to move forward, but everybody should be involved in yeah. building it and yeah. have input to it. It's just sure. that it's got to make sure that it's operating are driven, yeah. not driven by the engineer telling the operator what to do. Yeah. So yesterday we were, as we were preparing for doing this interview, you said, oh yeah, I got my quote. And I said, Nanny can't <laughs> use without standards, there can be no Kaizen, right? Because everybody uses that one. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but related to that quote, uh, you know, we need standards so we can make improvements, right? If we don't have standards or a standard way of working, we can't ever make it better, right? All right. So, when do we make it better? How often should standardized work be updated, be improved? What do you sure. think? So, the, you know, the obvious answer is anytime we see a better way, we make the pro- make the improvement. But my mentor, and, and I remember this, probably one of the hardest lessons I learned with him, was he would walk in and say, all right, how old is your standard work? Oh, what do you mean? Well, when was the last time you guys updated it? six, seven months ago, then it's not standard work. Standard work should change every three to six months. Otherwise, you're not improving. And if you're not improving, you're dying. I mean, he was really boom, you know, like, wow, thank you very much. Great to know. <laughs> so that's always been my motivator is it should imp- it should change anytime you find a better way. Yeah. But you should be finding better ways within three to six months. Your standard work should never be longer than that. Otherwise, mm. you're not improving your process. Wow. That's, so, yeah, that's good. Yeah. And it motivated our operators to have more control of the standard work process. You know, the yeah. old days, you, if you changed the way work was done, it had to go up to engineer and they had to sign off and it had to go over to production management and they had to sign off. Yeah. Standardized work controlled by the supervisor and the operator. So we find a better way. We make sure safety quality are met, and we sign off and make the change. Yeah, you know. So much different perspective. You know, work standard is what I call more of what engineering does, which is this is the way the product has to be done to meet qualifications, and that doesn't change over time. You know, unless building codes change or things yeah. like that. Yeah. But standardized work should be changed often. Yeah. So, and that's a big challenge. I mean, I walk into our. Even well, there's our, a lot of things that need to change there. Oh. I mean, you think about a standard work combination sheet. You think yeah. about a standard worksheet. You got the worksheet, the I work mean, chart, the job, and, and the job element is the piece that most operators use, right? Because that's the visual picture of steps in sequence. Yeah. But yeah, you know, you got to update your combination table. You got to update your work balance chart. Yeah. You know, did I just shift more weight to you instead of me? In which right. case, we really didn't gain anything. And you got to really test it, right? Yeah. You yeah. know. Make sure it's 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 we're not missing something. Yeah, you know? and that's all that engagement, right? That's yeah. all that respect for people, and and, and that's you know in, in my article, and I, I really got on a tear last night, which is why I was up till midnight. 
But I even talked about what are the, you know, what, how do you know when standard work is successful? Uh, one of which is that it's changing every three to six months at least. You know, you're changing regularly, improving regularly, and getting better. Um, another is it's a self-diagnostic. Your actual operators are using it to say, I have a problem, mm -hmm. and, and pulling that end on before it's too late. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I talked about a lot of this stuff, you know, yeah. about, about driving respect for people, feeling empowered to make change to your job to make it better, and getting away from that mentality of, you know, oh, and I, bad lean implementations, right? Oh, all they make us do is work harder. They, they took three guys away. Now you do the jobs of three guys. Yeah. You know, standardized work and lean is about making it smarter, right? I'm going to give you more structure, which saves time. Yeah. And so you can get more done, but not by giving you more to do, but by yeah. reducing the amount of time it takes to do it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of neat because I talked a lot about that in the article. But, you know, this is it's really empowering people, respect for people, engaging your When's people. When's this article boss. coming out? I actually haven't given it to I6 Sigma yet. So this is kind of an <laughs> Who's it going to? <laughs> to I6 Sigma. Oh, I6 um, Sigma. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, cool. Well, so, yeah. You know, we'll figure, you know, this, this episode will go out in a month or so. So maybe we'll have it up by then. If they Might do, be. we'll link to it. Yeah. So good, 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 good. Um, Let's see. I mean, is there anything else you want to talk about as it relates to standardized work? Oh, sure. You throw that clause in. It's got to relate to standardized work. Or anything. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't have to be that. It could be anything. Uh, you know, that's, What's that's, on your mind? Uh, that's the challenge, isn't it? I mean, I'm such a junkie. I could talk for weeks on lean and run out of, poor, poor Greg would run out of recording kind of time with me there. So, um, you know, I just, I, you know, want to thank you for letting me chatter on about standard work and get on my soapbox a little bit. And yeah. Rant and rave. And well, it's good. You know, listen, you know, in this age of, you know, what's new and everything's there's all these new things coming out. Sometimes we got to get back to the foundation of what this yeah. stuff's all about. And we can have all the, I don't even want to use any other buzzwords out there, but you know, we, we can all imagine what they all are, but without some of these foundational things like standardized work, like five S, I mean, they're not the sexiest things around, <laughs> but listen, if you forget about them and, um, push them to the side, trouble's coming. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a reason coming. why standardization is at the bottom of the TPS house. Yeah. It's foundational. Yeah. And you can't bypass it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. What's the best way for folks to connect with you, Mike? You know, uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm, I tell people, even at these conferences, I say, please don't give me your business card because within 20 minutes, your business card's in the trash. Yeah, seriously. You know, I'm on LinkedIn, and LinkedIn is my connection, it's my contact list. Yeah. Uh, so I do LinkedIn a lot. Um, and then the other one is, you know, I work for Steel Partners. My email I always like to share and is uh, M-T-H-E-L-E-N at steelpartners.com. And, and steel is S-T-E-E-L. Right, right. Yep. yep. Yeah, the, the iron, not the theft. Got yeah, it. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> Important distinction. <laughs> yep. But, uh, we don't steal. We don't steal, <laughs> no. Well, we as my baseball one, players. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. One of the things that I was taught years ago, right, the old swipe mentality, and I share this when I do training, and people look at me and I said, I'm always open to swipe. Swiping is stealing with integrity, pride, and enthusiasm. Oh, I like that. And I share everything freely, so if people have questions, you know, I... I'm one of those crazy people. I love Dan Markovitz. Mm -hmm. uh, you know Dan, uh, Factory of One. I'm not quite as diligent with my outlook as he is. But, uh, <laughs> you know how to inbox zero? Uh, no, five? but I have 10 or less. Okay. That's my goal. At the end yeah. of every day is 10 yeah. or less. That's so, good. And my general is if I'm not on vacation, and it's not the I, – I tell you what, I have three kids, so weekends are not work. Yeah. But uh, it, within 24 working hours, so you email me on Friday, Monday. Usually within a day, I get back to answer any email that so people send. So we got a send, few, so. many thousands of people listening to this right now. So everybody go <laughs> email Mike right now. I got to call my boss. Yeah. I need a couple of days off just to answer email here. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. All yeah. right, Mike. Well, hey, thanks for coming on. It's always a pleasure. I uh, always enjoy chatting with you. Keep up the good work. And uh, yeah, man. I love Gimbo Academy. It. It's great, Ron. Yeah, I've been been hanging around with you for probably, what, 10, 12 years now. Yeah, you were, you were, you were hanging well, around before Gimbo Academy was cool, yeah, man. I, I, have, I have old <laughs> cheesy videos of Ron doing, telling us what 5S is, man. Let me tell you. So I, I you know, love uh, Gimbo Academy. I love what you guys have done. Always glad you. to be a part of it. So All right. Appreciate All right. it, Mike. Thank Take you. care. Thanks for listening to the Gemba Academy podcast. Now, we invite you to take a no-strings-attached, fully functional test drive of GembaAcademy.com. Gain immediate access to more than a 1,000 Lean and Six Sigma learning resources, all free of charge, at GembaAcademy.com.